You ready? Yes. Welcome to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of FlagandBanner.com. Through storytelling and conversational interviews, this weekly radio show offers listeners first-hand insight in starting and running a business, the ups and downs of risk-taking, and the commonalities of successful people. Connect with Carrie through her candid, often funny, and informative weekly blog, where you'll read and comment on life as wife, mother, daughter, and entrepreneur. And now it's time for Carrie McCoy to get all up in your business. Thank you, Jason. My guest is making faces at me. Like Jason said, I'm Carrie McCoy, and it's time for me to get up in your business. Before we start, I want to introduce my co-host, who you just heard from, Jason Malik from Arise Studio in Conway, Arkansas. Say hello, Jason. Hi, Carrie. If right now you're sitting at your computer, I was going to say you might want to watch us live on FlagandBanner.com's Facebook page, which a lot of people like to do. But today we're having technical difficulties, so we we will have the video available on YouTube next week for you to see. If for some reason you miss any part of today's show, want to hear it again or share it, there's a way and Jason will tell you how. Listen to all UIYB past and present interviews by going to flagandbanner.com and clicking on radio show. There you may join our email list or like us on Facebook, thus getting a reminder notification of the day of the show and a sneak peek of that day's guest. And if you'd like to be an underwriter of any UIYB shows, send an email to marketing at flagandbanner.com. That's marketing at flagandbanner.com. Back to you, Carrie. Thank you, Jason. If you're tuning into this broadcast for the first time, welcome. And if you're a returning fan, you probably know this next part by heart. But at the risk of being boring, we must repeat ourselves for our newcomers. And besides that, it gives my guests a chance to settle into their seat. This show up in your business with Carrie McCoy began as a platform for me, a small business owner and a guest to pay forward our experiential knowledge in a conversational way. Originally, my team and I thought it would speak to entrepreneurs and want to be entrepreneurs, but it seems to have a wider audience appeal because after all who isn't inspired by everyday people's american-made stories and today the stories are so american-made to see people in their totality is humanizing we all thirst to connect and make sense of an overcomplicated world and on this show we have the luxury of time to go deeper than a mere soundbite or headline and my favorite part we always learn something it's no secret that successful people work hard, but other common traits found in many of my guests are the heart of a teacher, belief in a higher power, and creativity. And my guests today are so creative. What a thrill to have two famous Grammy Award winning songwriters on the show today Nashville's Mr. Steve Dean and Mr. Don Goodman. You may not know their names, but you might, but you definitely know their songs. They have written songs for George Strait, Lee Greenwood, Reba McIntyre, Blake Shelton, just to name a few. Today, they're writing more songs than ever for a nonprofit called Operation Song. This Nashville-based organization's mission is to empower veterans, active duty military, and their families to cathartically tell their war stories through the process of songwriting. Since 2012, the organization has written over 600 songs with veterans and their families. They hold weekly workshops in Tennessee, monthly retreats in Arkansas and Georgia, and are available for sponsored group retreats throughout the U.S. Anyone can participate. A musical background is not required, only the desire of the veteran or his family to tell their story. You can listen to some of their empowering songs at operationsong.org, and their recently released album, We Got Your Six, is available on iTunes. We're going to hear some of the songs today. Be forewarned about this show. You may want to get a, t- a tissue, because I know I did when I was preparing for it. It is a pleasure to welcome to the table the Nashville singer-songwriters turned humanitarians, Mr. Steve Dean and Mr. Don Goodman. Hey, Carrie, how are you? I'm fine. Hey, Don. Hey, Don. We were just talking about what a radio voice he has. I said, do you sing? He goes, nope. <laughs> <laughs> he just writes the songs. So being a songwriter is a, before we jump into Operation Song, which is wonderful, um, being a songwriter is a dream of many. Steve Dean and Don Goodman... How did both of you 
start your careers. One's been in it for how long? 48 uh, years? 48 years, man. And the other's been, and you've been 37. in 37. Yeah. So how did you start, Don? Uh, I hitchhiked into Nashville with a shoebox full of the worst songs you ever heard in your life. <laughs> but I had an unquenchable thirst to be a songwriter, and I had a dream that just wouldn't die. Hard work, right there. Is actually when I moved over to Nashville, I was I was born and raised in Little Rock, so I uh, love Little Rock. I think about Little Rock every day of my life, still, and uh, always will. But I just got in my little Toyota that I had a '74 Corolla SR5, really uh -huh. sporty little car, and put my guitar in the back seat. And I had six hundred dollars in cash, no cell phone, no computer. I did absolutely no research. God told me to go do this, and that's what I did. And you're a singer also, aren't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. You're a singer-songwriter. Yes, correct. So, Don, what was your first break? Uh, knocking on the right door. I walked up to Quadraphonic Studios and knocked on the door, and there was a guy up on the roof putting the roof on, and I said, do you know who I might talk to here? I, I hear there's a guy called Troy Seals, and he spit the nails out of his mouth. He says, I'm Troy. What do you want? I said, well, I'm a songwriter. He said, well, hey, who ain't? He, so he come down the ladder. We went inside. We wrote a song that afternoon. And my very first time in town, Joe Simon cut it that night. That is meant to be. Yeah, yes, ma'am. How bad were your knees knocking? Uh, I, I was, well, I was terrified to sit down with Troy. I started playing my guitar and singing a little bit. Troy said, let me see them lyrics. Give me that guitar. And he started playing, and I never took my guitar out of the car again because he was so good. I knew I'd never be that good. Was it a big studio? What was the name of the studio? It was Quadraphonic Studio. Is that a big studio? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We cut Dobie Gray there, John Prine, Chris Christopherson, Johnny Cash. I mean, everybody. Fogelberg. Fogelberg's first album. I, I got a job right there with them after we wrote that song. They gave me $75 a week to be the janitor and 25 to write songs. <laughs> wow. Can I tell you how many people have said they've started at, a, at their career as a janitor? Yeah. It gets your foot in the door. You know? That's the mm -hmm. key. That's it. Find out where you want to work and get a job no matter what the job is. You know what my best buddy told me one time? Uh -uh. Take the job nobody else wants. you got job security. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That's pretty good. <laughs> Steve, how about you? Uh, well, I actually uh, was in college at University of Arkansas at Little Rock here. So I did all my schooling in Little Rock. And um, I was, uh, let's see, about my sophomore year, I guess, I came home with, because music has always been the thing with me. And I was in bands and writing songs back in those days, too. But um, so my, I brought home a point six on my grade point average. A point six. Yes, ma'am. Is that like below one? Yes. Oh, look, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> four, point four below. <laughs> it sounds like it. Minnesota. <laughs> well, I've heard a lot of things. I always, some people say that that's, must be hard to do in Arkansas. I go, hey, wait a minute, man, that's a Kentucky joke. <laughs> but anyway, um, anyway, so I moved over there and um, I got a, my first break was going into a publishing company. I knocked on three doors. So the third door was the charm at this point. And uh, the man who was the publisher, his his uh, general manager took me in and liked something that I wrote because I was from Arkansas. This helps. Uh, Kai Fleming was who is from Fort Smith. You may have heard of her. She's a big time songwriter in Nashville. She was in, from Fort Smith. And um, so when they found out I was from Arkansas, then I got in the door. That was really how I got in the door. And then I got my very first song recorded by Sylvia. Remember wow. Sylvia? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, on the session, my song was cut on the session that nobody was cut on. So I got to watch them record Nobody. You're Nobody Called Today. You know that song? Mm -hmm. It was the song of the year in 1983. Mm -hmm. My song wasn't that, but it was it was on that session. So uh, I had been at the company for six days when I got my first song recorded. Does that stuff still happen? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, no, I, I was just going to say that night when I drove home, my butt never hit the hit the seat. I was floating home thinking, oh my gosh, this was my first song I really wrote in Nashville and it's been recorded by a national recording artist. And it went on to be a, a gold album and and uh, my publisher called me down and said, hey Steve, I'm writing you a check right now because you're making money in the music business. I thought, wow, this is cool. So it's you, been a journey though. You both were successful in the first week that you went to Nashville. Yeah. Can that mm -hmm. still be done? 
Uh, if, maybe. If, yeah, if God really likes you, <laughs> you, you got a chance, maybe. But uh, it's tough down there. You know, there's 250,000 people a weekend coming to Nashville right now. You can't even walk on Lower Broadway. So yeah. it would and be every hard. one of them is want to be songwriter. You know how you get a songwriter off your porch in Nashville? How? Pay for the pizza. <laughs> 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 so do your, were your parents in? Uh, were your parents songwriters or musical? Either one of you? Well, you know, my dad uh, is a writer. He's a feature writer, and he's written a lot of feature stories. And for, the, actually, for the newspaper? Mm, no, he was in his mind back in the day. Uh, when he was in college, he was thinking for Look or for Life magazine, something like that, or People magazine today or whatever they have out today, a, a story about somebody. And my mother was um, a really great singer. So I think I got a combination of uh, both of them. I mean, she never sang professionally, but she was in singing in the church all the time and always a featured soloist. And, and so uh, and I got her, you know, she showed me, she says, this is C on the piano. And I said, well, how do you make a C chord? And, and she showed me how to do that. So she was real in, in, you know, instrumental in, in getting me uh, playing an instrument, which you, was the piano. Do you both play, write your songs with the guitar, though? Yeah, mostly. I mean, these days it is. I mean, I, I have a, tons of songs I used to write on the piano, though, all the time. And I still like to do that. Do you do that, Don? I, I play guitar. I'm not a real good guitar player. But as far as singing goes... I sat between my mama and daddy at the Church of Christ. Mama sang sharp soprano and daddy sang flat bass. I didn't have a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> pitch, pitch is the great elusive thing that lives somewhere out in the universe. Um, so you both went to the Grammys, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. How was it? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it was it's, amazing. It's, it's, it's Disneyland. You know, it's just an awesome thing. We went to the ACMs, too, one time, which is Academy of Country Music, because uh, mm -hmm. our song was up for Song of the Year. We were in the which top one? five watching you. Was it y'all's song together or no, just it's, yours? It's just a song I wrote with Rodney Atkins and a guy named Brian White. And uh, so you went? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was nerve-wracking as, as everything, because when it came up, I was thinking, we're not going to win, we're not going to win. And we didn't. But um, it was still amazing to be there and and you know, all the, just being in the midst of all those people. Peers. Peers, yeah. But you have won six, haven't you, of, of songs you've co-written? Yes. Six number ones. Six number ones. Country songs, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. How many Grammys have you won? I have been nominated for a Grammy. You've not won one? If you look up nominated in the dictionary, it means you didn't win. <laughs> Don, did you won a Grammy though, didn't you? No, ma'am. No, I'm nominated. Oh, I'm just really messing up. Yeah, well, aren't that's I? okay. But I was I was nominated for Song of the Year uh, two times, and I'll tell you a funny story. Uh -huh. I'm sitting there, and I'm nominated for Lee Greenwood's Ring on Her Finger, Time on Her Hands, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody's going, "You got it. You got it. It's a lock." Well, <laughs> that was the year Willie Nelson cut "You Were Always on My Mind." Oh, wow! So for seven times, we were nominated for Song of the Year that year. And all seven times, you were always on my mind. You just want to die. <laughs> for <laughs> 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 I, I hear it in my sleep. You know, I have nightmares. I hear Willie singing that song. It's a good song. Now, the Grammy thing for me, though, really, Reba McIntyre's Greatest Hits, uh, Volume 2, won a Grammy. So I'm my song is on there, but I didn't get a Grammy. I didn't get it. But the album, she got the Grammy. Mm -hmm. you, uh, I got the CD. Yeah. Don, you've got a, uh, you've got, you wrote a song for Old Red for Blake Shelton. Blake Shelton, yes, ma'am. They just keep opening up those bars and I just keep getting money. It's awesome. I was going to say, do you, do you just get, uh, what is that called when you royalties? get? Royalties. Royalties. Mm -hmm. And residuals. And residuals. What do they call it about when they open up Old Red? What do they call that? Is that a residual? Or? Uh, that's a residual. Yeah. Every time uh, they open a new one, they, they uh, and I got to say this, Blake Shelton demanded that they pay the writers. That's nice. And he says, I wouldn't be here without that song. By golly, pay the writers. Is That's there, a good man. Is there anybody you wouldn't work with in the industry? <laughs> I probably wouldn't mention any names, but. Well, I couldn't hear the question. Is there anybody you wouldn't work with in the industry? Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, just play it. <laughs> you got me a lot, man. Uh, hey, let me tell you about this guy. Okay. Here. All right. I had to, when we went to uh, Chattanooga to fire up the 
uh, Operation Song Program in Chattanooga, they told me I could pick any songwriter I wanted to take with me over there. And so I picked Steve for selfish reasons. At the time, he had just won the most performed song of the last decade. Which one? Watching you. <laughs> the riding the it's just... Everywhere we go, I sing Old Red, everybody sings along. He sings Watching You, and they stand and sing along. All the mothers are crying. Oh, you know? <laughs> it's I love amazing. It. I love it. All right. <clears throat> this is a great place to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Grammy-nominated Nashville songwriters, Mr. Steve Dean and Mr. Don Goodman. As I said earlier, you may not know their names, but you know their work as they have collaborated and written songs for Reba, Blake, Lee Greenwood, George Strait, and many more. Today, they are writing headline songs, healing songs, and headline songs with and for veterans, active duty, and their families through a nonprofit called Operation Song. Their success has been acclaimed in interviews by the Today Show and PBS. We're going to talk all about it and learn all about it. Get your tissue ready. We'll learn more about this special program, these special guys, and how you can get involved after the break. Stay tuned. Flagandbanner.com is so much more than a flag store. Dress up your address, plan a perfect party, or throw some pillows on your porch. Bring in your old U.S. flag and get $5 off a new one. Hurry down to theflagandbanner.com. Downtown Little Rock, open Monday through Saturday. You're listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy, a production of flagandbanner.com. Over 40 years ago, with only $400, Carrie founded Arkansas Flag and Banner. During the last four decades, the business has grown and changed, starting with door-to-door sales and telemarketing to mail order and catalog sales. And now, a third of their sales come via the internet. This past year, Flag and Banner added another internet feature, live chatting. Over time, Carrie's business and leadership knowledge grew. As early as 2004, she began sharing this knowledge on her weekly blog. And in 2009, she founded a nonprofit Friends of Dreamland Ballroom. And in 2014, Brave Magazine was launched. Today, she's branched out to the radio with this very production, podcast, and live stream on Facebook. Each week on this show, you'll hear candid conversations between her and her guest about real-world experiences on a variety of businesses and topics that we hope you'll find interesting and inspiring. If you'd like to ask Carrie a question, share your story, or underwrite any of our past or present shows, send an email to questions at upyourbusiness.org or message her on flagandbanners.com Facebook page. Back to you, Carrie. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with Grammy-nominated songwriters Mr. Steve Dean and Mr. Don Goodman from Nashville, Tennessee. Today, they're lending their talents and passion to a program called Operation Song, whose mission is to heal veterans and their families through the cathartic process of songwriting. Before the break, we talked about breaking into the business of songwriting, how lucky these guys were. They landed a job the first week in Nashville back in the 1970s. They packed up their cars with their guitars, drove down there with their knees knocking, knocked on doors, and were very successful. And now they're paying it forward, and we're going to find out how this all came to be. So who wants to tell us how Operation Song got started? Don does. Operation Song started. The founder, Bob Regan, was uh, playing with USO Tour in Iraq. And he noticed while he was there that at uh, uh, the National Guard, some of those people are grandparents that are over there serving. And Bob thought, man, how cool it'd be if we just had a tent here that said the songwriter's in and let those people just come in and tell the stories about what it was like being there. So when he came home, he went to the VA and approached the VA on that, and they gave us a shot. And uh, we started at the VA with six veterans gathered around the table. In what city? In Murfreesboro, Tennessee, at Sergeant York, uh, the VA there. So he got the idea when he was out. In in Iraq doing in the field Mm -hmm. and came back and pitched it to the veterans that had returned in Murfreesboro. And and it it was so successful that uh, the VA is just all up in our corner now. uh, So you've been with them since the beginning. You've been with Bob since the beginning. Yeah, six years now. Um, Tell me about the first experience when you set up and where the veterans came from. And I'll tell you this, all right, and this will tell you what up song's all about. 
I'd been there three weeks. Bob had to go out of town. He asked me to take a class. First day in the class, I get this Vietnam vet, and, and he's, he's uptight, and I can tell, and I just got talking about his family and where he come from, and I kind of gained his confidence, and I just took a shot, and I said, tell me what it is you can't say. Oh. And he looked at me, and his lips started trembling, and he said, I'll tell you what I can't say. He says, my first night in Vietnam, they were running water buffalo at us, and the VC were firing out of the buffalo. He says, I was 17 years old in a foxhole with a, with a rifle, scared to death. Anything I heard, I shot. Next morning when the sun come up, there was a little eight or nine-year-old girl in front of his foxhole with her arms reaching out toward him and her hair blown back and her hole in her chest, and he knew he had killed her. He had alcohol addiction, drug addiction, four broken marriages. The man was just absolutely broken. He said he saw her every day of his life. We wrote that song, and he got that demon out that he had been dealing with for 50 years. And the next week, his wife came with him, and she said, Are you Don Goodman? I said, Yes, ma'am, I am. She said, I don't know what you've done but my husband doesn't wake up screaming anymore. I was addicted. I have been riding with them every day I can ever since. Let's play one of your songs. Let's do that. Which one? Uh, let's see, which one are we starting with? We shot the pictures. Is that what you want That'd be great, yeah. You want to tell them about it? Sure. Uh, Bruce Wesson, was a Vietnam is or was a Vietnam War photographer. He's still living, of course. And um, he's, he's a Little Rock native. He's a Little Rock native. He's a great friend, and he's uh, actually I met him through my dad at the church there, you know. And so one day I was there um, visiting, and we went to went to church, and I saw Bruce in the hallway, and I said, "Hey, Bruce, I'm working with a group called Operation Song now, and I would love to be able to write your story." He said, "Well, you know, let me think about that." And I got back home Wednesday or Thursday. He gave me a call and said, I'd like to do that. So really, Bruce's song was the very first song that was written in Little Rock for Operation Song Little Rock. And Bruce is a photographer. He yeah. didn't carry a gun. Right. He said to me, he said, I, he's the one who introduced me to you guys. And he said, I told these guys things I'd never told my wife yet. Yeah. So let's hear Bruce's song. He was a photographer in Vietnam. Right. <laughs> The film went back from Cameron Bay In a classified bag to the USA But the negatives stay in my mind I've looked at them a million times We shot the pictures They shot the guns Never belonged, just tagged along didn't fit in, wasn't one of them They were fighting to keep each other alive I was a 1LT with a Nikon 35 We shot the pictures They shot the guns It ain't all in black and white The blood runs red in the middle of the night There's a place to hide but no escape We froze time in a hell of a place The gallery the late great 68 We shot the pictures They shot the guns While the survivors of a firefight Are digging in for a long night We fly out with the wounded and dead And fight with guilt in a warm dry bed We shot the pictures they shot the guns It ain't all in black and white The blood runs red in the middle of the night There's a place to hide but no escape We froze time in a hell of a place The gallery of war The late great 68 We shot the pictures They shot the guns I made a deal 
with the prayers I pray If I live through this, I'd pay it back one day When people walk through those halls, they'll see The truth they're on display The orphans, the widows, the soldiers and the pain Won't be left in the jungle, standing in the rain It ain't all in black and white The blood runs red in the middle of the night There's a place to hide but no escape We froze time in a hell of a place The gallery of war The late great 68 We shot the pictures They shot the guns We shot the picture. Wow. We didn't, for everybody out there, we didn't say a word during that. That was powerful. Wonderful. The truth is a powerful thing. Yes, this so good. So let's talk about the process. Um, how do you get them, how do you get them started? Uh, I usually start out like, where are you from? What would your daddy do? Grew up in the country, grew up on a farm. Oh, he grew up in town. I uh, have paper out. The whole thing is to establish trust. I had a veteran early on. I asked him a heavy question a little too quick. He looked at me and he says, Hoss, we're going to have to build a little trust before we go there. Oh, taught you a lesson, didn't he? Yeah, baby. <laughs> taught me a big old lesson. Early I'm, on. That was early, though. Yeah. That was yeah. in the Yeah, and now, now we've done it so many times. But here's the deal. You go from writing with a, with a 96-year-old college professor. You've got to get to his mentality and speak in his words. Uh, what do you mean with a 96-year-old college professor? A 96-year-old, he was a college professor for, geez, I mean, 40, 50 years. Yeah. After he come home from Vietnam, I mean, from uh, World War II. And in his language, I stood at Nagasaki on that crystallized sand and stared at the atrocity that man had done to man. Oh. Out of all of that insanity, I found Christianity, and from the horrors of that war, I found peace. Or you go right with an eight-year-old girl, and you got to be her voice, and you go, Mama pushed me in the swing so high up to heaven where the angels fly. I want to go where daddies go and never die. Mama pushed me in the swing so high. You've got to be their voice. I don't know if I'm going to do your business. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. <laughs> all right. So they come in. How many are in a group? Uh, well, it all depends. Steve, tell them about the difference. Okay. Well, in our situation in Chattanooga, when we started Chattanooga, uh, we had six people. We had six veterans, I mean, and all sitting around the table and Don is known in the class now that we've come a long way in this class. He's been lovingly nicknamed Shakespeare. Oh, I love it. That is a good one. And, and they call him Beethoven. Oh, that's good too. <laughs> so, um, but I didn't know for sure if uh, if these guys even liked me when I first got. I didn't know what to expect. I don't think any of us really did. I mean, Don had more experience at it than I did. In, from Murfreesboro, but um, most of these guys in our class, not most, at least half of them were Vietnam veterans at the time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and they're not that much older than me. You know, they might have been, uh, at the time when we started that, I was, I guess I was probably 60, you know, and they were mostly 65 and 66 years old, some were 70, but uh, that's not a big age difference. And I was afraid that, I mean, I hadn't done anything like that. I mean, I've been a songwriter this whole time, playing my guitar. And, you know, I just thought, well, these guys have, have done so much, they're not going to really like me that much. <laughs> but um, we, as time went along, we got the first man to speak in our class. Jerry is his name. And he said, because uh, Don said, well, does anybody have anything they want to say? And Jerry raised his hand. He says, well, I got some poems I've written. Don said, you want to read them? He goes, nope, you read them. Gave them to Don. And that was how we first broke the ice, I think, in our class. And uh, Jerry's song is a powerful song. It's, it's, it's called Young Jerry, Old Jerry. And he was young Jerry going into Long Bend when he flew into uh, Vietnam. He landed at Long Bend. 
and he saw the soldiers coming out of the jungle, and he said, I created the old Jerry. I said, if I ever get out of here alive, I know who the old Jerry's going to be. But he says, this is one of the coolest things, I think. He says, sometimes young Jerry turns out the light while old Jerry lies awake all night. Um, and see, that's what it's all about. So how many were in that class that you're talking about? There were six. And where? Did, how did you, did the, did the Veterans Administration recommend them to you? Is it part of their therapy? We got them from the vet center. And uh, there's a vet center in most towns. Mm-hmm. And, uh, They're in there already, maybe doing some other treatments yeah. and trying yeah. to get over PTSD. And you say this might be a new way for you to add to what you're already doing. Music therapy, you know, uh, you know, creative uh, therapy. That's what I like to call it. And so they come in pretty willingly because they're already at the VA. They're already seeking help. And, and they're skeptical, you know, because you hear, okay, come on, we're going to write a song that's going to help you with your PTSD. And they're like, yeah, right. You know, I've had 15 years of therapy and a million pills, and, and that can't help, and I'm going to write a song, and that's going to make a difference. Mm-hmm. And, and, but then once, once that first song at the table gets written, mm-hmm. and the next guys and the next guys, and they all start crying together, and, and then they got their platoon back, and they know they got someone, they're not alone. Mm-hmm. And when they see the similarities in their story, they realize they're not the only guy who's buying their groceries at 2 in the morning so they won't see nobody in the store, take their garbage out at midnight so they don't have to talk to the neighbors, mm-hmm. won't go near fireworks, car backfires, and they're under a car. These guys are coming home. They used to call it shell shock. Right. Right now. Now... Do you realize that 32% of all people at the VA are diagnosed with PTSD? And there are 21 military-related suicides a day in this country. I read that. 20 a day. 20 veterans kill themselves a day. Now, right now, we're in harm's way in 73 countries. 73 countries. How many veterans are we going to have coming home? And we can't take care of the ones we got right now. They're reaching out for new ways and creative therapy. Fishing. They got like uh, healing waters. They take them fishing. It's to get them back together and give them back the squad, the platoon, the safety of knowing someone has their back. And that's what Operation Song is. That's what we've been. So it started in 2012. It's 2019 right now. So it's been around seven years. How many? And I I read 600. Uh, We're over 750 now. I want to talk about the process of writing the song, too. We know how you're starting to get them to open up, but let's play another song. We're at the halfway mark. Uh, which song did, did we want to do, Chattanooga Rain? This is about the family. Right, and we don't have that one with us. But you do, I think. Oh, you do? Well, play that one. Oh, like is there share? another one? No, there's another one you want to well, do? Well, we've got some other Little Rock songs, but if you want to play No, no, some. let's do one you want to. All sure. right, well, all right, well <laughs> so... Um, when we came down, and, and for the very first time that we came down, we came down for a weekend, and mm-hmm. we, uh, I asked my dad if if we could write his story. And, oh. he, and my dad got in the into uh, the Navy in 1946. He was too young for World War II, and so he, the Navy made uh, made him the man he is today. That he he likes the fact that he was in the Navy and he got to go to college on the GI Bill, and so. Um, Growing up my whole life, now you'll relate to this, Mm -hmm. Um, in my house, we listened to a lot of music in my house. My mom was a musician and and a singer and a musician. Dad loved music. And so we had uh, had lots of music in the house. I heard a lot of big band music, too. And he loved big band music, still does. Matter of fact, that is the only music. I know you're listening, Dad. (laughs) So anyway, um, and so when the... So I knew that. He told me the, that was the music, that was the beat, everything. So when the Beatles came out when I was a kid, I said, well, what about this, Dad? This has got a great beat, too. And he goes, yeah, it's got a good beat. And I said, it, even their name has beat in the title, the Beatles, you know. Oh, yeah. And he goes, yeah, they're, they're good, but they don't have the beat. <laughs> so the challenge in my life was, and this is awesome, I'm so glad that we were able to do this. We kind of had to hog time to write the song. But we, he went ahead and agreed to do it, and we wrote the song, and we put it in the big band flavor. Awesome. Let's hear it. It's called The Navy in Me. The Navy in Me. I quit following 
a plowing a Missouri mule. I joined the Navy when I got out of school. I was 17 when I left Big Mo and rode the train to San Diego. They taught me how to swap the deck, roll my drawers and scrub my neck. The girls all thought we looked so cute when we hit town in our sailor suits and I'd like to Navy for letting me serve and the man it made me the courtesy of a grateful nation that paid the bills for my education I proudly fly my flag each day in Little Rock where I live and I pray the life we lived came naturally with the help of God and the Navy in me I took that hard-earned naval knowledge I came home and I went to college That's where I met the love of my life And I made Carolyn Green my wife We fulfilled our family plan Had two great kids named Steve and Jane Our home was built on values taught me respect and honor and loyalty and I'd like to thank the U.S. Navy for letting me serve and the man it made me the courtesy of a grateful nation that paid the bills for my education I proudly fly my flag each day in Little Rock where I live and I pray the life we lived came naturally with the help of God and the Navy in me. Now I live in this house alone. The kids are grown with kids of their own. And I call on the courage of my Navy days as I stand vigil at Carolyn's grave. And I'd like to thank the U.S. Navy For letting me serve and the man it made me The courtesy of that grateful nation That paid the bills for my education And I proudly fly my flag each day In Little Rock where I live and I pray The life we lived came naturally With the help of God and the Navy in me Wow, love that we are dancing in here uh, Let me just tell everybody You're listening to Up In Your Business With me, Carrie McCoy And I'm speaking today With a Grammy Award winning song no, Grammy-nominated songwriters, Mr. Steve Dean and Mr. Don Goodman from Nashville, Tennessee, who today have found a new passion lending their songwriting talents to veterans in, in a cathartic creative program called Operation Song. That was so much fun, and it was written by Steve Dean for his father. And Don Goodman. And Don Goodman. And, uh, yeah, because he said Steve and Don, and then I learned in that song, Your Mother's Past. And right. uh, it, it was just a lovely song. Oh, it was such you. a nice upbeat, although you did try to yank our chain when you talked about him standing at the grave <laughs> with his mother. Yeah. They can't quit but making us a tearjerker over there. Over his, <laughs> like I said, you got to have the truth in there. Don, you are a country writer because that's always got to be crying somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I learned when I learned what the value of a song or what a song could do. Uh, Becky Hobbs and I wrote Angels Among Us for Alabama, and it became the theme song to the St. Jude's Children's Hospital and um. Special Olympics. And I'd go down to St. Jude's and see those mamas holding those little bald headed babies and praying. And then we go back the next year, and those babies were still there, and you just go, thank you, God, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
So that's when the truth hit home on what you can do with a song. So you've got these guys in the room. Let's tell our listeners how they can get involved and um, and in and, and the process. Uh, you can go to operationsong.org and uh, find out where the where the um, retreats are or well, where the actually, workshops are. Or how do you, you realize do it? There's a retreat this weekend in Little Rock. Yes, that's why you're in town. Let's that's, tell that's them about exactly that. Right. Yeah, Don, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, we, we brought seven hit songwriters down to uh, Nashville, and uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, and and we'll be working tonight at the General Mark Arthur Museum, and we'll be singing a few of our hits. Everybody's welcome if you want to come in. You're at the MacArthur Museum tonight, yes, six ma'am. o'clock for a meet and greet. Is yes. it inside? Yes, yes, ma'am. And you're going to be singing. We're going to sing some of our songs. And can people sign up? They can just come in if they want to. Can now, they sign up for a retreat or get information about it? They can get, get information. information and sign up for a future retreat. But we have seven veterans and seven songwriters in town. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, we're going to hide away in rooms. And tomorrow night at 7, I think it is, Steve? Yeah. We're going to perform seven songs that didn't exist at 9 o'clock that morning. Seven brand new songs written with veterans tomorrow is it just for okay and that's open to the public too. okay that's what i was gonna say it's, it's open at the public. macarthur museum as well yes please come yeah, i'm telling you love to have and you. this one's full yes ma'am. yes yes so you have to uh so can you go to the veterans administration and learn about how to sign up or yes you can or okay. do you or do you send uh how to how, how tell our listeners do All they right. go to your website do they go to the veterans administration and where should they go that's if a they really can't come question. tomorrow yeah i would say we will leave flyers on the front desk at the General MacArthur Museum, and we will notify them there with any other contact information you might need. If you'll give me a link, I probably got y'all's emails. If somebody uh, wants to, do you care if I put your email out there? Not at all. Mm-hmm. I'll put y'all's emails on flagandbanner.com's okay. page about y'all, and um, and then they can just email you direct, and you can send them information. Awesome. We have actually got. Uh, there's four more after after tonight's or today's or this weekend's mm-hmm. uh, retreat. We've got four more Little Rock retreats already in the in line. They don't have dates for them yet, but we're, Little Rock is putting on tonight's. The city of Little Rock's sponsoring this one, and they're also sponsoring one more. And then the VA has got three more they want to do. They want to sponsor three more. So we're going to have other opportunities in Little Rock this year. We've got, like I said, four more after this. So there are one a month about? Probably once every two months, I would say, because there's, what is this, April? I and, mean, there's and how many are in a class? Seven. seven. So that's 28 more openings. So there's seven writers with seven in a class. Yep. Yep. And it's veterans, female veterans. It can be family members. Uh, we would, you know, we like to pick the ones that need it the most, not just someone who wants to write a song, be a singer. And so let's talk about how they pay it forward after that, because you can't just, you're going to run out of enough songwriters, it would seem like to me. So do the, is it, is it kind of like AA where you, once you learn it, you pass it for and you sponsor somebody else? Or do you write a song and then you learn to sponsor somebody else on writes a song? Or how do you? Well, what we're trying to work on right now to set up in Little Rock while we get the parameters and all the legalities of opening a franchise mm-hmm. is we're going to have like an alumni program for those that have gone through the program that will be at the General MacArthur Museum, I think maybe like a Saturday morning. And those eight, I mean, the, right now after this retreat, there will be 28 of the alumni that we've written their songs here in Little Rock. They will be there. And we'll have a couple local writers there, and we'll put a new veteran in that chair every week, and we'll write his story. And the local writers are going to start writing, and we're going to try and help those local writers raise the level or the bar to where the songs are, you know. And so the local writers don't have to be veterans, do they? No, no, no we're not veterans. We're not veterans either. Which, which you told me earlier you thought was an asset. Oh, absolutely. That yeah. we're not veterans. Yes, yes. Yeah. and why is that? Well, it's goes here. I was just going to say they've got. Uh, we don't. We're not going to be getting our story mixed up with the veteran's story. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. if we, if something we were veterans and we got in a situation that was similar to this, whose story are they going to be writing? So as just being a songwriter like we are, then you know we can just tell be. Yeah, we can just tell their story. I know a lot of songwriters that I think would. They're amateurs. Does that matter? We got to keep that level up. 
No, because you got to be good ones. Well, yeah, because you got some guy's story there, and it means the world to him. And I would like to know that when it's done, it's a song he's going to love. I gave a veteran a copy of his song once, and and after we'd finished the class, and and I saw him about two weeks later. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what do you think about that song? He said, well, I'll tell you, brother. I put that CD in my truck, and I bet I've listened to it a hundred times. I said, well, what do you think? He says, I think you listened. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's what it's got to be. So That's the songwriters that are helping you do this are professionals. They are not amateurs. All hit songwriters come from Nashville that are coming this week have all written number one songs. It's not hard to get people to participate, is it? No. No. You want to go help it. a veteran? Well, when are we going? Mm-hmm. Now, if we ask them to go to Iraq, they might hang up on us. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're not there doing any retreats in the near future. <laughs> so what have you yet? Yeah, you're not going to go do any uh, shows over in Iraq. Um, <laughs> but they'll come and help you write songs. Yeah. So what do you think this is going to go? How far do you think this can go? Uh, sky's the limit in my book. I'm thinking that we need to keep this thing moving, even after Don and I are not able to do this anymore. We need someone who can carry it forward because we don't want it to die. We're bringing the young kids on. Every retreat we can now, we're trying to get those 25, 20 year old riders, but kids that are just knocking it out of the park. Because mm-hmm. you know, when you tell your story, man, I want everyone you play it for to go, where on earth did you get that? You know, because I want it to be that good. Well, songwriting is about digging deep into your emotions anyway even mm-hmm. if it's a love song even if it's not about war it's about a broken heart i mean i've heard artists say all the time i don't want to be an artist because that means i have to be hurting all the time to get the good stuff <laughs> you know like i said earlier every time we write with a sailor they want to talk about girls i ain't figured it out <laughs> yet marines want to talk about how tough they are yeah yeah so they have a they have a theme depending on what service which, you're in yeah, probably which branch they're in yep what do you think you guys get out of it? Oh, listen, it has been a life changer for me. I mean, totally changed my life over and over and over again. Like I said, in the first class that I went to, I, I was pretty nervous because mm-hmm. I didn't know what to expect. And getting to know these veterans, I always knew there was a war going on when I was growing up, but I didn't know what they went through. I didn't have any idea, really. I saw some news clips on TV, maybe, but it, it was nothing like what I've learned from just talking to these guys and they'll make a comment like, well, yeah, we were in the cut every day. And I go, well, what's the cut? Well, you know, we had a dozer and we just went right through the jungle. I went, you did? He, I said, how many dozers? He's all oh, about 20 lined up across and we went right straight through the what's jungle. What's a dozer? Yeah, like a bulldozer. Oh. Yeah, dozer, whatever you want to call it. But they were I clear said, in the coast. I just know. said, I was, I said, why were you doing that? He goes, well, we were trying to expose the enemy and we were trying to also let the villagers escape the tyranny they were under. And I'm just like, wow, man, you know, and just things like that. But anyway, these guys are in my heart big time and they're lifelong. I consider them lifelong friends. I've not Mm -hmm. known them my whole life, but I consider them to be lifelong friends. Close friends for sure. What about you, Don? What have you gotten out of it? My phone rings. First thing I do at every class, I give them my phone number. My phone rings all night, all day. Uh, if I'm sleeping, I, as soon as I get up, I check the messages. Some of those guys desperately need someone to talk to because they're really, uh, they wake up screaming. They say they can smell the blood in the cordite. They can feel their buddy's broken bone that was driven into their arm. They can, that's how real their dreams are. We've got one more song to play before the time's up. What's this one about? Okay, this is a man that I've known my whole life, literally my whole life, uh, and I never knew any of this stuff about him until veterans don't like to talk about I know, it. And he's, but he's, I just didn't know. I knew he'd been later on. I found out he'd been in, in world war two, but I didn't know anything, what he had done. Uh, and he also, um, he was the honor guard for general MacArthur and was standing on the deck uh, on the, on the dock of, on the, the, Missouri. Dock of the Missouri when the surrender was signed. Wow. And he's one of, he's the last surviving, honor guard of, of the 175 that General MacArthur had had uh, chosen. From and World War II. Then he comes home to Little Rock, and he's assistant superintendent of school when the nine kids came through the door at Central <laughs> High School. He was standing honor guard in that hallway. So wow. the song is called Honor Guard. Right. Dr. Paul Fair. No. 
Okalona, Arkansas in 1925 Eugenia and J.A. Fair's love gave me life The last of ten children but only nine of us survived Daddy taught me how to work and Mama taught me how to fight From high school to Henderson State, ROTC It was there that I was taught to teach and met my sweet Marie I went to boot camp and she served too Marie went to the Pentagon and I left Saw my buddies lose their life Blood and bullets on the ground Kamikazes in the sky I was there at Casablanca When he called the generals in And talked about the bomb That brought the war and stars when the surrender was signed we were standing on a guard in 1957 I lived in Little Rock I was assistant superintendent when Central High School doors were locked Eisenhower called the troops in, sent the hundred and first, and I realized how much prejudice can hurt. When those nine came through the door, and hatred scarred their hearts, I was in the hallway. husband and a father the last of MacArthur's 175 is still standing on God Wow, that is just good. You're listening to Up In Your Business with me, Carrie McCoy, and I'm speaking today with songwriters Mr. Steve Dean and Mr. Don Goodman from Nashville, Tennessee, who today are lending their cathartic songwriting talents and time to veterans and their families in a program called Operation Song. You can go and learn more about it at operationsong.org. They have an album out. You just released an album, didn't you? Here in Chattanooga. I'm mean, here in Little Rock. We have the first uh, volume of Little Rock Song. Which is what we're listening to right now. These are all off the mm-hmm. Little Rock Song volume. And they'll be available tonight and all weekend at MacArthur's Museum over there. And all monies from them will go to cut more songs for the veterans. Uh, didn't you have another album released not too long ago uh, that, that I saw on your Today Show? Uh, oh, that something was, about six? That's We Got Your Six. Yeah. We mm-hmm. Got Your Six. Yeah, that's one that's on uh, iTunes, I iTunes. think. Yeah, yeah, it's on that iTunes. That one has Chattanooga rain on i do believe and that's about the family right, and the wife right. that lost yeah. that mm-hmm. one broke me up the terrorist attack down in chattanooga back in 2015 mm-hmm. so um these guys are great operation song.org um steve dean don goodman y'all are i mean i can't talk about it i've got a gift for you 
Hey, all hey, right. Because you are doing oh. this in Tennessee, Georgia, and Arkansas. Thank That's you. your three places. You have wow. a flag and a desk set. That's awesome. For both of you with oh. the U.S. flag, Tennessee, Georgia, and Arkansas flag that y'all can take. And I hope we add many more flags to that. I hope so, my too. My granddaughter says I have a shrine in my bedroom. This, a, a flags? A shrine. Because I have all the things from all People the different events in there. This will go perfect. Yes, it will. You. Thank you so much, Carrie. You're welcome. Um, Tennessee, Georgia, Arkansas, operationsong.org. You'll have we'll have more information on ArkansasFlagandBanner.com. Just click on radio if you want to find some more information. Next week we're going to have a guest. Uh, who are we having next week, Jason? Uh, f- Father, oh, <clears throat> Father, Father, Fre- I'm sorry. Father Fred Ball of San. I always have a hard time saying this. Father Fred Ball of San Damiano Ecumenical Catholic Church. Now. This father is not only married to God, he's a Catholic church priest. He's married to his wife also. He's married to a woman. And he's going to tell you how, and I'll give you a hint, it has to do with the word ecumenical. Um, he also talks about the liturgical season of Easter, which well, Easter was actually last weekend, but the Easter season goes on for seven weeks. Mm-hmm. I know. It's a, so he's going to be on. He's going to tell us all about Easter and Holy Week. If you have... Uh, great entrepreneurial story that you would like to share, contact me and Jason will tell you how. Sunday, a brief bio to questions at upyourbusiness.org. Message Carrie on flagandbanner.com's Facebook or make a comment on her blog. To our listeners, thank you for spending this time with us. Don and Steve has made you cry. I told y'all to get a tissue. (laughs) If you think this program's been about you, you're right. But it's also been for us. Thank you for letting us fulfill our destiny. We hope that today you heard or you learned something that's been inspiring or enlightening and that it, whatever it is, will help you up your business, your independence, or your life, especially today. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next time on Up In Your Business. Until then, be brave and keep it up. You've been listening to Up In Your Business with Kerry McCoy, a production of flagandbanner.com. If you miss any part of the show or want to learn more about UIYB, go to flagandbanner.com and click on Radio Show. Like us on Facebook or subscribe to her weekly podcast wherever you like to listen. All interviews are recorded and posted the following week with links to resources you heard discussed on today's show. Underwriting opportunities available upon request. Carrie's goal is to help you live the American dream.